Okay, when we get up close to this, and this is gonna be in the roadside book. So here's a little tree here. You see this? This is a 2.32 billion year old tillite. It, it's a rock form of till. Now, or diamictite is more appropriate term. But what you can see here is you see the most obvious thing here would be these red class of granitic phaneritic rocks. Some of them aren't. Some of them are more finer grain because they're metasedimentary rocks, but most are these granitic red rocks. So that's what you see in here. In this darker, sandy, it's a lithic sandy matrix. Um, I would be technically an immature quartzite now because this is metamorphic. So you see that. And I love the Gauganda for that. We get up more here, you see that this becomes more of an proto quartzite. It's very red, but that's what it is. A lot of feldspars in here at the top. This, this parent rock, the protolith of this, is a sandstone. It's a feldspathic or a Kosick sandstone. And you see the sharp contact right here. And it goes up and up to right there before returning to more diamictite. And this is a black slate. And you still do see on occasion these little red granitic class dropped in. But it, this is almost a black rock and you can tell by looking at it, it's very, very fine grained and laminated. And there's a nice one there. So this probably represents some sort of subglacial um, lake or something like that, or proglacial lake, probably subglacial, because you can still see things. This looks like a drop stone right here. You see, you see this? Uh, I can't get up there close enough to get to get to measure it, but I would say it's probably about it's at least six to seven inches at its longest points. But you see how the beds wrap around it like that. What happened is this was obviously deposited by water, the, the slate here as a shale. And there was probably a glacier over it. And it would occasionally, as the bottom would melt a little due mostly to friction, it would drop boop, right in the lake into the sediment, pop, plop down, and then sediments would deposit over it and drape over it in very quiet still water. You can tell by the laminations, this was deposited in very quiet and still water because the only disturbances are where there's these drop stones. And here is a bed of sandy material near the base. So I just think that's really cool in this outcrop here. I'm going to measure this really quick to get a thickness. So the thickness of this, this is in feet, it's an engineering tape. So it has inches on the left and tens and hundreds of feet on the right. So we've got about 3.33 feet thickness here. So it's, it's about a meter. So I still have to get strike and dip too. That's about where I was. You can see that big cobble, almost boulder in the background there. And there is the about one meter lake deposits that are in between the two diamictites. But you come over here and the lake deposit goes up because as you can see, the thing dips that way. You see the tillite again, but right here what you see is you see plutonic granitic rocks and then looks very similar, almost as if it's all the same rock. It probably was. This was probably one large boulder as the glaciers moved through. It busted it up, broke it up, and just eventually dropped the whole mass right here. Uh, some of the boulder still has very angular, it's very angular edges to it. Other parts are much more rounded. So it would have been busted up moved, rolled a few times to bust it up around the edges, but probably not too far because it does seem to be the same boulder. And there is another quartzite boulder that was probably a 
proto quartzite, actually, it was at the time it might have just been uh, sandstone that is along with it because you see some of it in there. But you go down, so there's the bottom of our probably likely sub uh, glacial lake deposit. It's up there, sorry, my bad. That's the bottom of it. You come down and about six and a half feet, so what is that, 1.8 meters, something like that. If it's not, I'll correct it. You get down here and you get more slates. When here, you get a red proto-quartzite, so it's parent rock, it's protolith, would have been an arcosic aronite, it's arcosic sandstone, a lot of feldspars. And then you get black slates again, but what you see here is you do see some class, but not a lot. Reason being is because this was probably a subglacial river. Um, it's not very evenly bedded. It's a lot more chaotic. There's not a lot of pebbles and cobbles in it. There's no drop stones in it that I see. So this was likely, this going that way, was likely a river, a subglacial river. And it could have been a combo of river and lake. And it comes back this way. And then eventually, it's not all that thick. It eventually comes back into more of a diamictite type deposit right there with more typical stones in it.